Hello guys and welcome back for another Eternum video. Today we will take a closer look at all the forts across the Eternum map in all the territories of the island. Some of them have amazing bonus effects so make sure to stay until the end so you can know which ones are the best for you. Before going over all the forts on the map, we have to know a few basic things. Each fort can be captured by a faction and after that it will be locked for one hour. After those 60 minutes, the fort will be open again for capture, but if nobody shows up, it will remain under the control of the last faction which captured it. The bonus of each fort is provided to all faction members, regardless of their level, PvP or PvE flag status or anything else. Now when we know the basics about the forts, let's start with the south side of the island. The first one we will take a look at is the one in Cutlass Keys. This one provides a bonus of 1% luck while gathering across the map. This bonus previously was 10% but it was reduced due to a wrong calculation formula. Going a bit north from Cutlass Keys we will end up in Monarch's Bluff. The fort there will provide us with a bonus of 5% experience and this might become handy for all the newcomers on a turnum. Monarch's Bluff is also a starting territory which gives an option for you to capture the fort. Continuing further north, we are now in Ebonscale Reach. The old castle there will give us a discount for all the items in the faction shop. The discount will be 5% of the tokens needed for any of the purchases, but will not affect the price of the goat. The last step on our path to the north will be in Brimstone Sands. There, if we manage to capture the fort, we will receive a bonus of 10% yield for all the gathering skills. If you aim to make business with gathering of raw materials, this might be your favorite place. In the very center of the map, hidden inside the misty woods of Brightwood, there is a fort which gives a really special bonus. If your faction has the control over it, you will be able to create fire camps without any resources and as fast as a snap of your fingers. Just a bit south of Brightwood, you will find the legendary citadel of Everfall or the other name for it, Neverfall. By controlling it, your faction will have an additional 10% Azot sold gain. If you wonder what is that sold for, this is the PvP track currency. Not far away from there is another epic fort. Right in the middle of the fields of Windsward, there is a small citadel that will provide a bonus to all faction members. This one is also a bit special, as it will increase the chance by 10% for each consumable to not be consumed when used. Getting to the southeast side of the Eternum Island, we have the territory of Reek Water. The bastion there is more PvP friendly and will provide you with 10% increased PvP experience. This will affect all the types of experience received from Arena, OPR Battlegrounds, Open World Kills or Wars. The next one on the line is probably the most contested fort of all and is located in the most hated territory of all. The region is Weaver's Fen and the bonus from there is 10% yield on all refining skills. This is highly valuable bonus especially when you are processing your daily cooldowns but also it can make a big difference for high volumes of refining. From the best we move a bit to the north and we end up in the newest one on the map the one in Edengrove. This keep will provide you with a global fee reduction of 10%. So if you like to go on a shopping spree or you want to feel like it's Black Friday, this might be the fort for you. The last two remaining forts are those in Restless Shore and Morningdale. Both of them are located on the most east side of the island and their bonuses are quite useful. The one in Restless Shore will provide you with free fast travel all across the map and without any limits, while the one in Morningdale will give an additional 5 points of gear score to all crafted items. For all dedicated crafters out there, this has to be the single best fort due to that bonus and if you want to know more about the crafting, you should check my video in which I explain everything that you need to know. Now, when we know all the bonuses which the different forts provide on the Eternum Island, which one do you think is the best? Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and where you like to go the most. If the information about the forts was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel.
There is a lot more information and tips which you can find there as well. If you have any other questions or you want to catch me live streaming, check the description below. There you can find useful links to my stream and my Discord community channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.